And they're all, luckily for me, they're all numbered. Working, it's working. Guys, welcome back. If you missed last episode, oh my God. We dyno tuned the original fuel injected throttle body from Phytech at Phytech. 435 horsepower at the wheels. I'm pretty happy with that, but the most astounding number, 500 pound feet of torque at the wheels. Yeah, that's why I smile all the time. So there you go. But this episode's even more exciting. We're converting over to port injected. Now, those of you been following the channel, I put know that I put in a, uh, a manifold from Edelbrock that has port injected holes in it. Now the fuel rails I put in are not, were not operational until today. So we're gonna go through not only putting that on, I'm also gonna do a quick tutorial on how to cut AN lines properly and do the fittings. But most importantly, we're gonna dyno it again, baby. So stay tuned. If you're not a part of Phytech's channel, so go subscribe to them because they have a ton of tech tips you're gonna to wanna to know about if you have a Phytech unit, but we're gonna cover some of those today as well. So let's go tear out the old one and put the new one in. So this is the original throttle body that we already installed. Now the one key point I want you guys to, to note is I had to put in a spacer because my um, support for the throttle linkage would hit that rail. And this is on a Pontiac. I don't know how it is on Chevy's, but I uh, had to do that. And the first thing we have to do is take off the fuel line, but we also need to talk about shortening that line because it has to attach to the back of this rail. So I was all excited to get this line off of the throttle body and attach it to this point here. And I just realized, oh my God, I still have my pressure sending unit from fuel pressure because that's mounted to the opposite rail on the throttle body, we now have to find a provision to put it on here. So this is the uh, sending unit for the pressure gauge. If you missed that episode, go check it out. Um, it's really awesome. It's a stepper motor driven gauge, but um, yeah, we have to find a spot for this. So with adapters and everything, um, we have to mount it to the fuel rail. Here's what I'm thinking. So here's a 45 for our fuel line and then a T and then this will go right on the end of the fuel rail here. And then we'll have this come up and maybe point it down a little bit so we can put the sending unit on here because it's like three or four inches long. So it'll kind of look like that. There we go. So I know it's tough to see black on black, but got the T, got our 90 degree for our gauge. And then we have a 45 over here. That's the fitting for the hose. And this is what you do with AN hoses. Put all your fittings where they're gonna go, and then you measure your hose. I'm taking a gray Sharpie. And it'll make sense in a minute when I, when I show you why. But that's gonna be my cut line. And I'm, obviously, it's gonna be hard to do this while in the car. And I always recommend it's doing this on the bench. Before we get to cutting, I wanna show you the anatomy of a fitting. So all fittings have this nut end which actually gets slipped over the hose. And when you're measuring for distance, you have to accommodate for that threaded length inside the nut, which is typically about 3 eighths of an inch. So when you, if you have a short distance of AN hose, you put your fittings on where they need to go, beginning and end, and then you measure your hose to about 3 eighths, and then you can put the nut on the hose. Now here's the most difficult part about AN hoses. If you've never touched one before, when you cut a hose, the end of it will flare like this. See that? That's exaggerated because I had a nut on there, but it was laying around. I wanted to show you that it's, um, it's extremely difficult to put the nut back on because that fray. It's even worse with a nylon braid. This is stainless steel, but the nylon braids are even worse. So here's what you need to do. Get some of this. This is from Aeroflow. I'll leave a part number below, but it's like a clear tape that does not stick. And that's why I wanted to mark the hose with the gray Sharpie. Where did it go? Right there is the gray Sharpie mark. So now that's where my cut line is. I'm gonna wrap this around this as tight as I can. And now that it's wrapped, I know that my mark, it's tough to see it, but it's dead center on the plastic wrap I basically put over that. And yes, you can use saran wrap if you wanna wrestle with it. But then you take some decent painter's tape and now we're gonna wrap 
right around the center of that because it's the same width so I know my cut line is down the middle of the tape. And now it's time to wrap this as tight as you can. So now that we're ready to cut it, we have several options here. We can use a really fine tooth bandsaw or hacksaw, but ideally what you really need to get is dedicated hose shears. So this is what I use for all of my AN hoses, super sharp shears. All right, right down the middle, bam. So after you cut it, it makes a little oval shape so you can press it on your, on your bench, make it round again. And then the clear tape starts to come off and since it doesn't have any sticky on it, it won't fray your line. So it's just a slight bit of fray and that's not a big deal. Now we take our nut, obviously the threaded end goes towards the outside and we put it over that smaller fray we just made and press it all the way in until it comes up against that internal thread. See right there, it's all the way butted up against the thread and that's what we wanna see. Now the hardest part is now getting this in here because as you get towards the end of it, it's very difficult to turn. Let me show you my trick. The best thing to do is to get some jaw inserts for your vise. These are aluminum. It won't scratch the aluminum fitting on the end so it keeps everything pretty, which is something that, uh, hey, all of us should shoot for. <laughs> Next step we will need is some hose lubrication because like I said, when we go to get the final thread inserting this, it gets very difficult to turn. So we're gonna lubricate this end like so, and we'll get it started. Keep an eye on the hose to make sure while you're threading this in, you're not pushing the hose out of the nut. Don't have an AN wrench. These are aluminum as well, just not scratch your surface. You can use a standard wrench. Ironically, I don't have the right size. So I'm gonna use my three quarter inch standard wrench and start tightening. And as you get towards the end, you wanna make sure your flats are lined up and you're good. I'm gonna go ahead and tape the other end so I don't get any dust in it. And by the way, you can flush it out now. So if you wanna use water, make sure this air dries enough before you put it back in the car. Uh, you can use acetone, whatever you want, but or air, by the way, blow it out, make sure there's no fragments in there. I'm gonna tape up the other end of the hose and put it back in the car. This worked out perfectly. Look, there's the line, 45 degree right into our T. And then this 90 gives me flexibility to pivot either way to make sure we have room for my gauge. Oh my gosh, this is too easy. Now, let's go ahead and take this throttle body off and switch it out to our port injected unit. So the O2 sensor is still attached. That's why I'm putting it right here. Oh man. New one goes on. All right, time for a break. That was easy. All right, so an hour later, we are good. Fuel pressure sending unit all tightened up and plugged in. And that's where the wires are running and they're all luckily for me they're all numbered odds on one side evens on the other and now that this is a new throttle body we have to set the IAC just like I did in the playlist so go check out my playlist on how to do that or hit up Vitex website and search uh, IAC setup so we're gonna have to do that real quick so number one before we get started uh, check for fuel leaks <laughs> Totally forgot to do that, but luckily I was able to run my pump without running the engine. And where I put the fuel pressure gauge sending unit on was not tight, so dripping fuel. So we're late, waiting a couple minutes for that to evaporate or it leaked. And uh, we have to do um, resetting the ISC control, like I said, but most importantly, has to relearn everything. We're gonna do the same thing we did last time and uh, do a couple pulls. And no pressure, first fire. All right, I got fuel pressure and uh, keying on. Because we haven't set the IC, I may need to throttle it. Let's, oh yeah, clutch. Hey, yo! Down a 
little bit, we're hot. So I give it a fair shot at 422. First pull. So Jeremy, uh, that was awesome. That, that was easy. Yeah, that <laughs> felt a lot easier than the throttle body yeah. injection tuning. Yep, for sure. Yeah, the, it's so much easier with the port injection to do accelerator pump and starting tuning. You basically don't need to do any tuning at all because it's preset. I did add five or 10% just to that, just because it's a big motor, it needs that, it's hungry. Yeah. Um, how big, is it big, how big is it? It's that big. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was really simple. I almost did nothing other than set it up out of the box and uh, it was ready to go. It made a little more power even. Yeah, that was awesome. What, what was it? the 10 more horsepower? 10 more horsepower. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't 10 more. 10 was, more pound feet of 10, torque. 10 more foot pounds and three more, I can't remember, something. Uh, two, two or three more horse. You emailed it to me. Yeah, yeah, you'll I'll get regurgitate it. regurgitate it yeah. later, but yeah, it was. Super simple, right? Yeah, wow, yeah. I'm stoked. So I can't wait to drive it. And uh, man, I, th I can't thank you enough for, yeah. for all the hard work and, and the help. And uh, you guys have been great. And the next project we just talked about is go switching over to EFI controlled timing, which Phytech has, but I need a new distributor to do that. And that will be a future video at some point. Yeah. So uh, other than that, in two days, I'm going to quarantine cruise and to drive the hell out of this new port injected unit. So. I can't wait. Hey, I can't wait to see you out there. Thanks again, brother. Yeah, you're welcome.